Okay, let's roll right into our post-race, our winner today of the fourth annual Pocono Mountains 125 for the second time in his NASCAR Camping World Truck Series career is Ryan Blaney, and he drives the number 29 Cooper Standard Ford for Brad Keselowski. And uh, certainly uh, a big win today, Ryan. Showed a lot of uh, savvy and a lot of uh, grit, aggressiveness on those final restarts. Those were pretty wild out there. Uh, yeah. and, and just talk about how you maneuvered up through that field there and, and uh, got that victory here today at Pocono. Well, you know, we, we were a good old day. Um, you know, we started up towards the front and, and was able to get the lead pretty early. Uh, and, and I thought, you know, we were definitely one of the best cars. I, um, I didn't think we were the best car before the pit stop. Uh, but, you know, we, I, I lost a little bit, just, just me getting to pit road, and, and that's how we lost the lead. And, and then we lost another spot to the 32 in traffic. But um, you know, I definitely think my car was good enough to get to the lead. It was just a matter of, of uh, getting close to be able to make the move. Uh, and I knew when the final restarts were coming, you know, you, you had to be really aggressive because it was it was so hard to pass out there today, and and restarts were really the only time you could make something happen. Uh, and, and I knew we had to go, and and uh, you know, luckily, you know, we were able to get a good restart there a couple times and get to the lead, and and then you know when we had the lead with that restart, they tandemed up and and drove by us, and and uh, you know, luckily I got another shot at it, and I was able to get around the 77. So just overall a good day, and. A really good um, turning point for this team, and I'm really happy with everyone at Brad Keselowski Racing to that, that's worked so hard and to get these trucks to where they need to be. And, and I, I really think this is going to be really good momentum for Michigan. Well, congratulations, uh, Ryan. One of our former NASCAR Next uh, class members, Ryan Blaney, with his second career win here in the Camping World Truck Series. He's joined by his crew chief, Doug Randolph. Doug, just talk about the win out there today. Certainly. Uh, an exciting race here at Pocono. The trucks are coming off uh, a great race up at uh, Eldora, and then you come in here at Camping World Truck Series, puts on good racing here at Pocono. Just talk about the uh, event today. Well, I mean, Ryan did a great job. We did have a pretty good piece. Um, he does a great job when uh, we have adversity. And, you know, in the, in the course of a race, there's always a thing or two that will go wrong, and he always does a great job keeping his composure and uh, making it pay off in the end and the restarts are always pretty hairy um, the two truck races he's won has been <coughs> uh, multiple restarts and I'll give him credit as he he learns with every restart figures out what he's going to do and uh, those restarts obviously they pay the big de dividends at the end so I mean it's a great day for everybody at BKR and for Ford and uh, you know to get this win like Ryan said we've been strong for two solid months now and just hadn't been able to put it all together and uh, hope this just starts the momentum rolling our way. Very good. We'll take questions now for either Ryan or Doug. We'll start here with uh, Reed, and then we'll go to Jim and then to Scott. Uh, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire Service. Congratulations. Ryan, um, why, why was, it, was it seemingly so difficult for a leader to hold the lead on a restart, and did lane choice really make a difference? Well... I don't think really lane choice made a big difference at all. Um, well, to be the leader on the restart, these straightaways are so long and it's so wide here uh, that people can just lay back. And, and these trucks put such a big hole in the draft that it, it's easy to you know, get a draft off someone and pull the inside. And, and I honestly thought the outside was the place to be if you were the leader. Uh, and I, I think we cleared the 77 and, and just the 32 was pushing, and that's, that's how he got back by us. Uh, so if... That can happen if you choose the outside, but you could get put in the middle if you choose the inside. So it's kind of a lose-lose a situation. It's hard to keep the lead on the restart if you're the leader, but uh, you know we were fortunate enough to be on the front row on that last restart and, and capitalize on it. Let's go here to Jim and then to Scott. Jim Uttershaw, Observer, kind of a follow-up. Um, you said you I talked about getting a second chance with the second overtime. At the time, did you think it was over? Uh, or considering how hairy the restarts appeared to be at the end of the race, did you think, wait a few seconds, there could be another opportunity? A little bit of both. You know, when we were, after we got settled into second, we were actually side by side with the 32 uh, going into two. And really what was going through my head was, should I let the 32 go and settle into third 
and not take a chance of going too wide through the tunnel turn and wrecking us because we had such a good day. And at the other time, I was like, we got to get all we can just in case there's another restart so we can start in the front row. Uh, and, and luckily, Akasha came out before I could make that decision, and uh, we were ahead of him. So, you know, it, it really just played out there. But, uh, you know, it was just tactic on the restarts. And, and uh, you know, like I said, we were lucky to be on the top end of them most of the time. Go ahead, Scott. Scott Walsh from the Scranton Times Tribune. My questions would kind of be along those lines too, but can you talk a little bit about um, what it's coming down the front street? You talk about how wide it is. You guys were getting like five and six cars wide, you know, really diving down, you know, to to the inside. Can you talk about just what you know what that's like? Give an adjective and maybe what it's described. You know what, what that's what that's like. Uh, it's pretty hairy when you're, especially when you're outside of four wide. Uh, you know, I was luckily not in that position. But, um, you know, we were third, that one restart when the 30 was leading. And, and when we took the lead, uh, you know, I was all the way to the inside wall trying to get by the 32. And, and you know, you get such a shallow entry into one, you don't know if you're going to make it. Uh, and, and luckily, you know, there was no, out, no one outside of me so I could use all the racetrack getting into one. Um, so, yeah, it, it's just, you know, it's so wide and, and it's easy to – fan out and it's, it's hard not to you know when you're back there you got you got all this racetrack to the left of you and it's hard not to take it so it's it's, it's pretty hectic if i had to pick a word for it over here go ahead candace smith drafting the circuits congratulations i was wondering if you've heard from your team owner and what anything your dad said before after what what's it been like in these you know few frenzied moments of celebration and victory thing uh, i haven't heard from brad um, they might be on their way to Iowa right now, or he might have texted me here. But, um, you know, he was driving that nationwide car tonight, so he had to be over there. But uh, I've, I've been really lucky to have my dad at both of my truck wins. And, and you know, not a lot of you guys can say that. And I've, I've been fortunate enough to have him here and, and have him giving me advice along the way, you know, before the race. And, and he even, you know, gave me some advice right before the green, you know, when I was in the truck. So I've been really fortunate to have him here give me a lot of advice and, and he has he's done the same thing since the beginning just just keeps giving me advice and you know i think very few dads can do that and I, i've been very lucky to have one like that go ahead young lady what mary let's mary joe buchanan speedway media this question is for doug can you talk a little bit about your strategy for the race and had you figured in multiple green white checkers well, it's a very short race, and you can do it in one stop. Um, and for the leaders or the guys that you think are going to win, they're going to try to do it in one stop. And we run this race sort of like a road course. You want to stop almost as early as you can in case there's a caution so you can cycle back through. So we were a little conservative. We made sure that when we pitted that we had enough fuel to run one green-white checkered. And then, obviously, if there's two or more, you hope there's some cautions to make up the difference. Um, Luckily, we were in a position where we were out front and could dictate a little more conservative strategy for ourselves and not really, uh, not really hurt ourselves. And then, the, just the way the race played out, it actually made it uh, made it easier for the most part. Everybody did a one-stop race except for that very last caution at the end. Ryan, from the floor, there was a question: if if you could share what, if anything, that your dad might have said to you before the race. Um. You know, we actually talked about restarts uh, and, and choosing the right line. And, and we really talked about the first restart and where we thought the 32 was going to choose and, and what we thought which lane would go and, and just different scenarios. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. We were actually talking about restarts before the race, and, and that's what it came down to. So, Dad's a prophet. Um, <laughs> yeah. Over here, this young lady, did you have a question? Oh, she did. Okay. Gentleman right here. Joe Meegock poking a record. Um, Ryan, first of all, I was looking at some stats while I was waiting for you to get in here, and you've already uh, surpassed your dad's NASCAR national wins. He had one, now you have two. Uh, that's got to be nice to have a little bragging rights on your dad. And, Doug, can you just talk about um, the future that Ryan has in, in this sport? He's so young, and he's already shown some promise now, and obviously the future looks pretty bright. Well, I mean, that's uh, at BKR, that's actually part of our job is, um, you know, training Ryan, training crew members. We work a little bit with Penske as um, 
a development program. A lot of our pit crew members are there, young guys that are on their radars that get their experience on our team. And, um, you know, it's just um, Ryan's a great talent. And learning how to win and learning, you know, the systems and um, the different things that nationwide and cup teams do. So he, he gets used to that. So when he steps up and moves up, hopefully we'll have the, the groundwork of knowledge that nothing will surprise him. Um, and he's, uh, he's got unlimited future. And it's, uh, for me, it's just great to be a part of it. And for those of you that don't know, it was my first crew, crew chief and job was with his dad. So it's come full circle for me, and I have kids Ryan's age, myself, and uh, it's just been really fun. He's a great kid to work with, um, good head on his shoulders, and he'll go a long way. Other questions? Well, Ryan, congratulations on this win here today at Pocono. Doug, congratulations as well, and good luck the rest of the season. We'll see you at Michigan. Thanks, guys. Thank you.